forth and cannot be taken away. That is the word of God. Mary chose the good part. Although Martha was comfort about many things and the Lord had to tell her. He had to call her name a couple times. Martha, Martha, you're troubled about many things. But I thank and praise God. He had to let her know that Mary chose the good part. She chose what could not be taken away. And I thank and praise God for the word of God. So at this time, we're going to present to some and introduce to others the pastor of a boneless rock in the house of prayer, Pastor Paul King. Let's shout glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, it is the glory that's to his name. God bless you. Amen. Sister Tony, God bless the saints tonight. Amen. Thank you tonight. Amen. For just him, him being God, he's worthy to be praised. And to be in the sanctuary, the service tonight on a Friday night. Amen. To be in his presence, it makes life worth living. Amen. Amen. Give us to know we can continue on in his name. You can make it. I can make it. We all can make it. You that's in the internet land, you can make it too. Amen. We thank God for you tonight as we are in his presence. Let's look to him. Father, again, we thank you and praise you for the service thus far. All that's been said to give your name the glory, the testimonies, the praises that have come up, amen, from your people. You called us out to do it, to show forth the praises of him that brought us out. And there was nobody but you. And as we be found on earth, oh God, urging up praise unto you, we realize the blessings of the Lord comes from above. They got to come from above and not beneath because you came down and you said we were from beneath and you were from above. So we count it a joy to have this enlightenment that so many men are struggling to their own destruction with scriptures. You chose us to give us an enlightenment. You said my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. And you loved us so that you said you would give pastors according to your heart. That would feed us with knowledge and understanding. Thank you for your care, your love, your concern. How you're looking after your people in times like these. Stretch out your hand and have your way in this word tonight. Send it forth to inspire and to encourage. Send it to give hope to them that are without. To build up and to strengthen your people everywhere. Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. Come on, let's give my hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. My soul delighted him. Oh, bless God's great name. Thank God. Amen. Thank God for you tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Me and Brother Brian in here representing the brothers. Amen. Tonight. Amen. They got us right now a little bit here, Brian. But that's all right. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Rejoice. Rejoice and right along with us. Thank the Lord. He's doing great things. It's always a blessing and a benefit when the handmaidens and the sons of God can go forth together. Amen. After all, that's what it's about. Praise the Lord. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. We thank God tonight. Amen. For the heart. Amen. Of the people of God who is a great people. Yes. Count the privilege and the honor to stand before such a great people in times like these. Amen. Who is in awe the apple of God's eye. Amen. Don't never let the devil tell you no different. <clears throat> Amen. Or nobody else that he used to put you or speak you down. Amen. Because after all, he came from heaven to do this thing. That you might be what you are in him. Amen. So see yourself like God see. How about that? Amen. Praise God. Be the raw priesthood. The holy nation and that chosen generation. Praise God that he called us to be. Thank God. Amen. Nothing wrong with serving the Lord. We're going to be into the word of God tonight. We're going to go. Uh, we're going to go back. If you allow me for part two. Amen. Of Jesus accomplished his mission. Amen. Praise the Lord. We want to share it in part unto you that we can uh, be delivered of this. Amen. And be benefited all together. Is that all right? We are in such a time. An hour, amen, that we're in today, praise God, for men and women to have a knowledge of and uh, of, of really who God is. And it's going to always be through Jesus Christ because he is the manifold wisdom. He, he is that that God manifested himself in. 
He came in the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. In a body like you and I. Amen. Praise God. That's why I keep telling uh, those that seeking to preach this body is not man's problem. Amen. Amen. Neither has it ever been. Right. It's never been man's problem. God didn't give man no problem now. Amen. Because when we look at the book, it's always good to go back to the beginning. Yeah. When we look at the book, God made man from the dust of the ground. Yeah. And what he had was a body like you and I. Amen. Oh, and he didn't leave my sisters out either. Amen. Because he had one too. Amen. So at the end of the day, praise God, they walked with God and had great fellowship. And there was a uniting that they had that God saw fit to give them power and dominion over everything. And my God, that relationship they had was eternal. Praise the Lord. Because note now, amen, even before Adam did what he did, amen, the body was designed to be eternal. Amen. There was no death in the body. Come on here. Amen. And there was no death. There was no disobedient act that had taken place. And so man wasn't even on time. Amen. He was in, he was in eternity right down here. Somebody say amen. Praise God. That's why it's good to go to the next level that we can see. Amen. What we have not seen and hear what we have not heard. Beholding who God is as he is declaring because he's speaking to us in relation to he is, to he is that we might come to know him and be as he has called us to be. So when we're looking at this and we were teaching and preaching from this, amen, uh, on Sunday, amen, realizing Jesus accomplished his mission, realizing who Jesus is, amen, and who he represents. As John saw it, I mean, there should be no theologian or Bible scholar, and it makes no difference what your position may be in church. If they that was eyewitnesses saw it like this, in the beginning was the Word, Amen. and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, right? Amen. That same Word was taken and made flesh. You mean to tell me Isaiah and all that was right? Amen. A body has thou prepared me. Amen. The very one, amen, that is really the author of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Amen. The one that is Alpha and Omega. He is the one that had the brilliant plan of salvation. He is the one, amen, who is all wise, all wisdom, amen, comes from him. Came up with this brilliant plan to redeem man from the disobedient act. The curse that came in. Yes. Amen. God himself. Praise the Lord who counseled with no angel. Who didn't talk it over with the 24 elders. Yes. Who didn't send Michael or the war angels. He saw fit to come himself. And I love the way God moved because you can't rush him. Amen. I mean, you can't make him go slower. You can't make him go faster. I mean, because he's God. Everything he created was to serve him and to do as he had given them to do. I, I like that because when you mature and you grow up, you realize you can't make God. Amen. I mean, we can't do like, like, like a dog, go here, go there. Amen. Oh, we are servants of his. We are his children. We just do, amen, what he would have us to do. And in so doing, he watch after us because he cares for his people. Yes, somebody may need to hear this tonight. He cares for you out there. Amen. He sees what you're going through. He sees the evil. He sees the ditches that's being dug. He sees all the deception, the haters. He sees all what's coming against you. But you got to realize and lift up your head and know who you are and who you belong unto. Because that same God that sees it all, I mean, everything about you, he cares and is concerned about. So you hang in there and watch what God manifests in your life. So it's tonight as we seek to go into this and bring out some things that we didn't get a chance to uh, on our last teaching. This is part two of Jesus accomplished his mission. And I want Sister Tony, grab for me again uh, Isaiah the 61st chapter. Isaiah 61 
Amen. And I want you to get for me those three verses. Amen. Amen. Of Isaiah 61. 60, 60. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. Amen. And then when we get there, right. praise the Lord, we're going to do, amen, I want to bring out the other scripture that parallels this so we can see where we're going with all of this. Because we need to really understand that Jesus accomplished the mission, what well, he was sent to do. Man fell into a state that couldn't no angel help, couldn't no man help. It took God to be his help. Amen. And there were so many things prophesied and spoken concerning that was to come. Yeah. That even men, amen, uh, back then didn't fully understand it because he gave it in parts. Amen. They thought it was going to be David, that king of kings. Yeah. They thought so many different ones was the one, but God was just rolling it out in such a way he gave them some. Not for man to think he knew all of what God was casing to do because he didn't even give man to know his name. Amen. He didn't even give Moses to know who he was. And, and, and he reveals himself. Amen. Praise the Lord to man in the New Testament where Paul found out. Paul might have been looking to him to hear him say, I'm Lord or I'm God. But when he asked him, who art thou? Amen. Out of heaven came, I'm Jesus. Amen. No more. Amen. I like to let folks know I am that I am. I was what I was, but my name is Jesus. Amen. Praise God. So he revealed himself. And I mean, when we look at the Old Testament, it was a shadow of things to come to bring man to a place that God wanted him to be. Not for man to camp and throw stakes in the ground like he knew it all and he understood what God was doing because God caused a slumber to come upon them and they did not see clearly. And so it's for us today as we learn from them to put it all together, the old with the new. Amen. That we can see clearly. Amen. Praise God. Because they without us should not be made perfect. That we can see clearly what this was all about. That we can be in this hour in time uh, what God had originally ordained the church to be. And that men and women, amen, if you allow me individually, will come in to watch this. Amen. A, cl a clarity of your mission. Amen. amen or your purpose. Of, of so many like, what is my purpose in life? What is my, what, is, what, Lord, why am I here? Amen. That's why I mean so much to come to Jesus, to come out the door that he can make us to know because we come up with all type of ideals before we come into the light and I'm going to be this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. Amen. Not knowing, you know, Paul thought he was going to do some things when he was Saul. Amen. But oh, he didn't know the calling where God had called him unto did not know the purpose wherewith he was born. Amen. But all oh, when the light came on, look what happened. Praise God. That's why it means so much for enlightenment and clarity to go forth in times like this that it might make known to you, amen, what God would have you to do or be. And then it might give you an insight that we can watch some wolves that's out here because it showed a lot around here. Amen. That showed a lot of wolves in sheep clothing. Amen. That's a lot of men and women going as God, but not as not as being moved by God. Amen. And it's for the people of God because he said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. All that ever went before him was thieves and robbers. Amen. But Jesus came in to set the record straight. Praise God. So everything that was spoken concerning him, I want to look at this because if she read these scriptures, what we're really looking at here, if you allow me, those of us that's business inclined, amen, we're getting ready to read a mission statement. You know, most people have mission statements for whatever they're seeking to do as they construct their businesses. What was happening when God spoke through the prophet Isaiah, he was giving the mission statement of what was going to be done and what he come to do. So if you don't mind for me, Sister Tony, grab for me Isaiah chapter 61, 1 through 3. What do the Bible say? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Mm -hmm. Upon him. Yes. Because the Lord hath anointed me 
to preach the good tidings unto the meek. Remember, they didn't know his name as Isaiah was revealing this, as God was making them to know. Go tell them this. Keep reading. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart. Oh, they didn't know who is me. Who is me? Is they talking about Isaiah? Is it talking about the other prophets? Who is me? Keep to, reading. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Uh huh. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Oh my God! God is in a dimension, a dimension where it's the third level. This thing is so spiritual that it have left them. Amen. That they. Have, what is all this? What is? Who is this about? What is this about? Amen. Who? Who? Who house is this gonna come out of? I mean, who is all this? This king? They're gonna be a king that do this? Amen. They thought this thing was in their day. I want to share this like this because you and I know his name, but with clarity we got to understand when the word was being made manifest to them and through this prophet Isaiah, they did not know his name. They did not know what you come to know about the gift that God gave. They, they just heard the promise. They just had the scripture. Amen. They had the scroll that God gave Isaiah. Amen. To hold on to and to cleave to. Because even in their day, they needed some good news. Even in their day, men's hearts were broken. Amen. And there was some bound. And I, I mean, look at here. They were captive to other nations, but they didn't really realize because God didn't give them to know yet. They were bound to iniquity, bound to principalities, and bound to Satan powers. Amen. The liberty uh, was to come, amen, to set the captives free. The great liberator, amen, praise God. It wasn't the ones that sat on the natural thrones. It wasn't the kings that was exalted. Nah, -uh, not the type of liberty that was going to need to come. Up. Amen. Only God can do this thing. Amen. It was Him, praise the Lord, the whole time. But Isaiah is just prophesying what God has given him to say. God not even making him to know everything. Just tell them this. Keep reading. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord uh -huh. and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Oh, somebody be comfort. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Mm -hmm. To give unto them beauty for ashes. Yes. The oil of joy for mourning. Look at here. Look what God's going to do. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaven. We can take some of that. The church needs some of that. Some of these sanctuaries need some of that. Amen. We need the garment of praise for the spirit yes. of heaviness. Amen. I mean, my God, there's a heavy spirit that have come in that's trying to sit down on the people of God. Sit down on your mind. Sit on your spirit. Oh, but the Bible said the spirit of the Lord God was upon me. Amen. The spirit of God was on him to do some things. He come with a mission. He's outlining his mission. Come on here. That they might be called trees of righteousness. Oh my God. The planting of the Lord that they he might be glorified. God. The trees of righteousness. My God to become a tree you got to grow. Amen. That thing starts real small, but if it stay rooted and grounded and get through the seasons of winter, summer, you know, get through the four seasons, that thing find itself in doing and all that come its way, praise the Lord, it got ways of the nourishment that comes from the nature and grows into a tree. Mm. Amen. Praise God. The same type of trees that they talk about in some because God always signified trees and he looked at trees like men. Amen. My people. Praise the Lord. You look in there. I can remember my father, the late pastor, Dallas J. King Sr. had a dream at one point in time. Amen. And the Lord showed him trees. Amen. And he saw the wrath of God beating trees. Amen. I mean tearing them up. Thank God, and God gave them to know, amen, they were them trees in the dream. You saw trees, but they represent men. Look, 
the same God that sits on the throne. Amen. Oh, I don't know if I would want to be on that side to be getting beat. I'd rather be getting blessed. Amen. Because at the end of the day, the mission that God came down is that man might be saved. Not that he might be destroyed. Man might be delivered. Not that he might be bound. Man might be healed. That man might be made free. When we look at this, amen, let's take a look at this. This mission, amen, with the spirit of the Lord being upon this individual, upon me. And I'm sure, amen, as Isaiah gave it out upon me, people that's not spiritual and people, they just looked at it like it was him. Amen. They looked at it like, oh, okay, he's the prophet, and then maybe, you know, da, 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 and not realize that, amen, you got to keep going because it, it, Isaiah was just prophesying, relaying the message. Amen. He was just saying, God said this and God said that. Amen. But isn't it something how we look at this? Or isn't it something if you look at your life before you got saved or before you became into the church or begin to get uh, find out about the Lord or the Bible? When you heard about biblical characters, isn't it something that was so big in your eyes? Amen. That you almost put them on the same level of Jesus. It's amazing how, amen, I talk about myself. Amen, it's coming on. You'll be like, oh, you were here about Ezekiel, here by Isaiah. But when, amen, you're just at a certain point and you really, amen, and you got a hunger and thirst, you see things of where you at. You can only see according to the level that you're on. Amen. But as you begin to go on, you begin to recognize through, uh, through walking this thing out, through growth and maturing and growing, you begin to realize, amen, these men and women was, was, was just like you and I. Amen. They had a body like you and I. They were human like you and I. They were not angels. They were men. They sold out and just dedicated their lives and surrendered to God that God can use them to speak through. So if that be the case, if I move God, if I move the spirit of Christ, because this is what it's speaking, this is what it's signifying, the spirit of Christ, the anointed one that is to come. If I move Christ, then even the vessel that God was choosing to speak through becomes nothing without him. Amen. What are you saying? Amen. Look here. All of us are nothing without him. In his form, in his past time, amen, for those that be on the other end of hearing, of hearing of faith, the people of God, the saints and men and women, and even those that don't know God need to recognize, amen, don't put the preacher higher than Jesus because you will find yourself trying to come over here and say the preacher said instead of being built upon the word that you can say Jesus said. And what God is doing in such a time as this, he's helping us all that we might grow and come into the fullness, the full statue of Christ. It makes no difference what our calling is. Amen. The higher you get, the more you're supposed to become like Jesus. It should not nothing be about you. It should be all about him. Even when he came, he made this thing all about his father. Amen. Even when he walked before his apostles and his disciples, amen, he made it all about whom he was doing the mission of. So when we look at this, a mission he was on and a mission he was coming to do. So when you look at mission, mission is a, a, like an assignment. Yeah. Uh, it's a pursuit. A purpose or aim. Amen. You know this, you put your mission there so you can, it helps you stay focused. It helps you realize even as you get to going, let me all keep it in line. That's what mission statements are when you do your business. It helps you keep it. You don't throw the mission statement away after first year, five years, 10 years, 20 years. No, you stay with the mission. And if you do, amen, then you'll find yourself having success. And so what Jesus did, everything that was written of him, amen, that came out the mouth of holy men, the prophets that God used, I mean, it was a lot of statements concerning him. And I love the way he gave it to Isaiah, amen, because he wrapped it all up and let us all know and the readers know that it was going to be the spirit of the Lord God. Now, that's big ass in the King James. I, I, I can't speak for a lot of all these other Bibles, y'all. Excuse me. I just stick with the King James. For you that's in internet land, I, I, I just know King James because I, I heard a lot of other stuff being read and I done said places. I'd be like, wait now, it sounds like this scripture, but it don't say that. 
you know, oh my God, when I got saved and the Holy Ghost there filled me, it was on the King James. Somebody say amen. And so don't put down to anything, but I, I just beg and folks stick with King James because all this other stuff came after anyway. Amen. And if man be honest, because I'm going to hit these blind leaders, if man be honest, they get these other Bibles because they like how it sounds. Because they got a chance to alter that. Let's move that over there and use this word. Look at here. Uh-uh. That's too close to it. He said, don't add. Don't, don't touch it. Don't put it. Uh-uh. If you look, I like that because you can understand it better. No, no. Amen. If you're looking for understanding, seek God. If you're looking for understanding, you can understand English. Get before God. Say, God, make me to know. And if you are his and you've been one he chose to feed his sheep, he's going to make you to know. He's going to open up your understanding. To the scriptures, and that right there, amen, should be enough for many people to say, wait a minute, let me not mess with this thing. Because if I've been called, Lord, you're supposed to make me to understand these scriptures. Because i got to preach these scriptures to that that you washed in your blood. To that that you redeemed. To that that you liberated. To that that you healed. And if you haven't given me understanding, woe is me, amen, to be doing something in your name that you haven't called me to do. Lord, help me tonight. I'm trying to just... Get in here. Amen. But then when we look at this, this mission that Jesus was on, it was an assignment. Amen. He came and he spoke of the journey that was going to take place. Or you allow me uh, the purpose, the goal that he was after. Yes. And he was specific with the task that he was going to do. I mean, my God, it talked about the sheep being led, amen, to his shears as a slaughter. I mean, he was specific, amen, of what it was going to take, even in the beginning when all this started, when he spoke and he passed the judgment upon creation and he began to speak and everything whipped it over. Thorns came out on things that didn't have thorns. He caused that serpent to be on his belly. I mean, the hand of God, the judgment of God came in. Amen. Because he was he told man, the day you do, you shall truly die and surely die. And when that happened, I, I when you go back and you look and you say, wait, God, but you had the remedy on the day you gave the judgments. Because then you come to say, amen, out of the womb of that woman, amen, that uh, yeah, the serpent head was going to be bruised. Amen. I mean, out of the womb of a woman, amen, the victorious one was going to come. Amen. My God, everything that was pronounced about this mission, about the call or the journey, the assignment, every word of God that God spoke through men of God, he fulfilled them. He brought them to pass. Is that all right? Amen. He brought them to pass. So when we look at this, the mission that he was on in order to do so, because there was many, amen, that needed good tidings to be brought to them. Amen. Because the curse of sin was upon man. Yeah. Good tidings, amen. We need good tidings. A time, I don't know about you, amen. I can remember, amen, when my father was still here. And I mean, we were seeking to get that atmosphere in that house right. And I say, Daddy, turn that news off. Amen. We want, we, 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 we want to make this a chapel of praise. I mean, all this political stuff and all this stuff, amen, don't do nothing but cause folks to worry. I don't want to turn CNN off. Let's turn some gospel on. Amen. Let's put it on the preacher channel. Amen. Because you can get so drowned with something. So much negative stuff and so much strengthless stuff. Amen. If you be a child of God, that stuff will rock from you. Amen. And it calls your spirit to wilter. Amen. Look at many times you need some good news. And I don't know no other good news than to give people in the midst of trouble, trials, and testing times that God is on the throne. Amen. And that everything that he has promised, he has accomplished. Amen. Everything he's spoken concerning what he was going to do has been done. Amen. That the sick can be healed. That the bowel can be delivered. Amen. That those in captivity can come out. And if your heart is broken because you built up your life upon her or him, he can heal your broken heart. Amen. My God, he can put you back together again. That you might realize you didn't do it. You got to give the glory to God. He did it. So when we look at this tonight, amen, the mission that was going to take place, that means good news, good tidings was going to be preached. But notice now, it was unto the meek. That means man was.
it's going to have to get to a point where he either have to have a meekness about himself. You have to realize your way don't work. You need help. You can't help yourself. My God, I'm in a, I'm in a vicious cycle. How do I get out? It's good news to the meek. Amen. It's good news to the meat to where it calls them to do good. It's even good news, watch this, because I got this, I want to make this straight and help people and deliver people from some old stuff. Amen. Because we put the word out here and we make the word seem like it's something that destroys and it drags and, it, you know, it's a downer. Amen. I always, when God made me to know it's not the word, I should tell pastor, yeah, they acted up because the word came out, but it wasn't the word that made them act up. It was what they was holding to that evil spirit is what made folks act crazy. Amen. But I found out, Sister Anderson, amen, if you got an evil spirit and you want to be free from it, amen, and when good news is preached and taught, amen, you're going to receive that and it's going to make you glad. So this gospel, watch this, it don't hurt, it's saved. This gospel don't destroy, it heals. Amen. Praise the Lord. This God, oh my God. It's the enemy that kills. I know, I know. Here we go again. They say, look at him. No, no, no. That's just what we've been saying a long time. Because some folks saw it as dull. But God is coming in this hour with the clarity to help men and women. He's for men. He's not against men. It's too many people think God is against them because white people present this thing. But God loves man. Amen. My God he didn't say he didn't have to talk it over with nobody else just because your attitude's messed up. God loves man. Even when men sin he loved them so to come up with this plan. I mean religion and doctrines of devils and divinity have come up with certain things that we so conscious on trying to see what's suitable and what we look at this scripture and you're going to find out something. I'm going to show you something tonight because there's a parallel to this in Luke chapter 4 Amen. That you will see when he came and was manifested in the flesh and he began to do all the things that the mission statement was concerning because he had to pay the price. He had to become the sacrifice or the lamb that would be slain that God set up through the duration of time. It was never about the blood of a bull and the blood of a dove and the blood of a heifer. It was never about the blood of some animal because that thing cannot change man. All that did was make God mindful of his completed plan. And therefore he would forbear and long suffer with man. And he would look beyond if you obey and do what I say. Amen. I ain't never delighted in that. I'd rather have obedience. I mean that's why one he called out and let his spirit be. He said oh amen. I come to do thy will. Oh God. Amen. I come to be obedient to where the first Adam messed up and, and the quicken Adam come in and he obeys. That, and that obedience, the obedience of what? It delivered man from a disobedient bondage. Amen. And so when we look at this tonight, I want to bring this out like this because the mission that Jesus was on and when he was sharing this, there were so many that was locked up in obscurity that didn't have understanding. They really didn't know. But then there was few that died in faith. That held to these precious promises. That realized, oh, there is a king to come. Because we don't see them come and go. We don't see all of them there in their sepulchers. We don't see them all of them there and went by the way of the dirt. But all the promises are yea and amen. They're still true. And so through the process of time from Obadiah, Amos, Micah, Elijah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and Isaiah, he kept saying the same thing and then he would add a little bit more because he is the author of all this. You know, I, I want to I wanna help people with something here because when we look at Genesis, the beginning of the Bible, and, and this will help a lot of people understand and crack open because you got people out here that was trying to discount the Bible. Bible because they want to make it seem like how can Moses be the author and Moses wasn't there in the beginning when God made. See that's why you don't know God because if you really knew what we were teaching then you would realize the spirit that was in Moses or the spirit that gave Moses to say what he said was the very one that said let there be. And so what God 
did when Moses had such a desire which we all should have. And my God, if we'll preach or in the fivefold, you should have a yearning and a burning, amen, to get a hearing from the Lord. And what Moses wanted to do was see him. Moses wanted to see the very one that was speaking to him, the very one that would shake the mountains, the very one whose voice was like many waters. He wanted to see him, and God said, oh, and God gave Moses, amen, to want that because he wanted me and you to learn something. He put in Moses a spirit to want to see him because that's what God is looking for because in this time, the mission that's been accomplished, when you receive Christ, you should want him more than ever. You In your life, you should want him. Oh my God. But God, amen, gave Moses this. No man has never seen me and lived. Amen. Nobody never seen me and lived. But what I'm going to do for you, amen, I'm going to put you in the cliff. I'm going to put you in the rock. That rock was Christ. I'm going to put you in the cliff. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my hand upon you because my power is so glorious. It's so much power. My glory can destroy rocks. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put my hand, I'm going to be a shield or a shade upon you. And I'm going to let you see my back parts. And I know, I know because that's where we went. Because we stayed in our corner line. We say he just saw the back of God. No, no. What God God did, he showed Moses what he did in the beginning. I'm going to show you what I did in the hind parts uh, that you might know who I am. I'm the one that said, let there be. I'm the, ah, uh, come on here. Amen. This mission God was on, he wanted man to see him and to know I'm God and beside me there is no other. And that's the message and this is what we're supposed to be building people upon that they might really see who God is. But how can they see him if we can't declare him? How can they see him if the preacher don't define him? Amen. And that's why God is lifting the veil. I know some of you looking at all that. You know, that's, that's all right. That's all right. If you want to steal it, steal it because it ain't my word. Amen. At the end of the day, it takes God to make known what's on these scriptures. And he's doing it in such a time because the hour is late. And he won't man to know Jesus accomplished his mission. Some of these preachers are preaching like, he accomplished nothing. But my God, everything he, he proclaimed to do, it has been done because he spoiled your principalities. Uh, he came in and made a show them in the open. With one word, he was taking on legions of demons, telling them, go, get out of his life. Uh, I mean, he was raising the dead, healing the sick, the brokenhearted. They said, that well, I have no husband. Oh my God, they oppressed the downtrodden. He came to set at liberty them that was bruised. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus accomplished his mission. And if Jesus accomplished his mission, we might as well stop it. If we're preaching, you can't do no better. We may as well stop it. Amen. You're teaching folks they can't be holy. Let's stop it. Ah, you can't be perfect. You don't know who perfect is. God is perfect. And at the end of the day, whatever he give you to do, because he don't tell you to do something you can't do. When we speak of perfect, we're not speaking of perfect like you can erase what you did in the past. All right? What's been done, been done. But when he come into your life, you ain't got to live like you once used to live. You can obey God and grow in him. I keep telling man, Jesus accomplished a mission show in such a way that you don't grow out of your bondages. You do not grow out of your sins. You don't grow out of your iniquities. You get delivered from all that. What we grow in is Christ. That means he mounts up in you. He grows. He matures. He comes into a full stature. Amen. What will you been called for so he can occupy you? Amen. That you can be a beacon of light so he can occupy you. So you can be the salt of that city that sits on the hill. That he can use you like he used the 120 trumpets on the Pentecost day. That he can stand up in folks that's with holy bonus that don't mind say this is that uh, that can tell men and women what God said is true. Somebody say amen. amen. 
So when we look at this, amen, we're going to get off into this and bring this out a little bit more. Sister Tony, go over there to Luke the 4, Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. I, the Lord signed on something I wasn't able to get to, amen, the last time we were here because the Spirit of the Lord come in, we just ride. You come, sometimes you can't go straight down. I've learned in the years of preaching, preachers that's of God that never finish, they just done. Amen. I mean, God always is giving on what he gives. Is that all right? Amen. When we look at this scripture that she about to read, because it mirrors, amen, uh, Isaiah 55, I mean 61, it mirrors Isaiah 61, thank the Lord, 1 through 3. And I want her to begin reading that over there when you have it, say amen. Amen. Read for me over there, then uh, Luke 4 and 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me uh -huh. because he hath, he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. All right. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Now look at that. Now remind me, now Jesus ain't reading from no script. Okay. To preach deliverance to the captives. Come on, Sister Tony. Jesus not reading from no script. He done walked in a temple. He done got among some, he done got among some Pharisees. Uh -huh. Those that thought they knew God. And thought they were doing service to God. And they sitting up in there with that dead stuff. Because when nobody getting healed. When nobody getting delivered. When nobody getting saved. When nobody receiving no miracle. When nobody getting changed. But I love what Jesus did. Because I mean he set such an example. Amen. That will put to shame a bunch of stuff that many have done for so long. Because he ended up preaching somewhere. That everybody was not believing like the way they believe. But he came that they also might be enlightened because he didn't even want them to be destroyed even though they was way off and very hypocritical and blind as a bat amen he came up in that temple and with the very thing that he read they in there talking about it don't you tell me you can't quote scripture and don't understand what you're doing because you know many well they was up in there they have heard that up in that sanctuary before but here come the king of kings here come the one Isaiah prophesied concerning and he's sitting up in that sanctuary and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And after he got through doing what he's doing, keep on reading, Sister Tony. To preach deliverance to the captives. Yes. And recovering of sight to the blind. Uh-huh. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Look at here. Now, if you notice, you know what he intentionally left out over there in that scripture? Mm -hmm. The part where he left out was the day of vengeance of our God. Mm. Because... Jesus came to say, uh -huh. he didn't come to condemn because man was already condemned. True. He didn't come to judge, thank God, because would nobody be saved. He came on a mission to help men. Yes. Now, when I bring this out like this, you got to understand something here. Amen. It's really time to preach the love of God. In such a way, amen, that men's lives might be changed. That men will come to know who really is the Prince of Peace. That men will come to know your sins can be forgiven. Oh, but I did this and they told me I'm just done. No, I don't care. That ain't the gospel message. You can ask God to forgive you of all your wrongs you ever done. And there's no big sin, little sin. All of it takes you to hell. Amen. God will forgive you of all your sins, your wrongdoings, everything you've done that's wrong. And never remember him no more because Jesus accomplished his mission. Amen. He died for you, me, and everybody else. He done shed his blood for the Pope. He done shed his blood for the prostitute. He done shed his blood for the drug addict, the homosexual, and the lesbian. It makes no difference who you are. He accomplished his mission. Amen. And that was to be that propitiation. The lamb without spot. There will be no more need for the Levitical system. Be no more need to go to a priest. Be no, he will become your high priest. Be no more need to go kill animals and shed blood. We don't need the outer court or the inner court. All we need is the holy of holies. We just got to get what he's at. He became the high priest. Amen. That he can cover whatever your own may be and then give you strength and power not to continue. Continue therein any longer. Amen. He don't look at you like you once did. See, that's what man has come up short at. That's what the church that's supposed to be saying. They let you know where the growth is not grown because God won't look at a man or woman after they forgive the forgiveness of their sin like they once done. You may think you know. Mm -hmm. I came up in the church. I can I can take I can say this. 
People come in and they get saved and they share a little too much. And they get personal. And I mean, my God, ain't nobody known them to. They came in the church and they and, and they get to talking. And what they say they want you to do, then the whole time they in there, that's how all folks look at them. Because they remember so and so. Hey, he was a game beggar. He was a da 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 da. She was this. And they used to like men. And they used to like women. And all that. Look at, look, see, that's what I'm saying. That's why the church got to grow up and develop in Christ. Because God don't look at no man after the flesh and no more. When you're born of God and born of the Spirit, you know who he sees? He sees his son. And that's why he gives men and women power to become the sons of God. That means that if I've been in here before you get in here, I got to get full of Jesus. Jesus full of enough word. Let the attributes of God be in Jesus Christ's ways be in me so that when I see you all, I see is him. That may, whatever you may go through, I can say he is your strength. He can help you. Hang on in there. God loves you. I can walk up on you and embrace you. I can hug you. I can let you know you are, are overcoming Christ. I ain't got to be looking at you talking about, uh, uh, we done got so bad we are teaching priests so they won't come in. And if you're doing that, if you don't want them to come in, the spirit ain't in where you are. At. I don't want to be nowhere where Jesus is not at. Because when Jesus is in the temple, wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there will be liberty. And there's folks that's bound that need to come on in. The homosexuals, the lesbians, the drug addicts, amen, the pimps, it don't make no difference who it is. They should be able to come in to the house of the Lord, where the people of God is extolling the great God of our salvation and the strength of our lives for accomplishing his mission, that they can hear the the rumbling of how great God is because he has prepared their heart to put the ears in their tongue that they can be delivered from the powers of Satan that the chains of the enemy can fall off their lives it's not for you and I to judge nobody amen we don't get but we just experienced something amen when somebody amen wanted to come in and they felt like they weren't properly dressed but my God this ain't about being properly dressed if God draws you and allow you to come don't let nothing hold you back. I mean, if you got to come in and you in your Friday night outfit, then you come on in, amen, and say, Lord, here I am. Save me, deliver me. And it shouldn't be such a way that we shouldn't be sitting around, oh my God, and so, and looking at them like, oh, look at the devil all on him. But what, what do you expect to be on if you're not in Christ? I've seen the times that we are not so grown and, and don't understand the mission being completed where the mother, somebody to come in with a short dress. The woman don't know nothing about Jesus. We will run over there and take all the blankets we got, cover them up. Amen. I've heard that they will go and snatch him out. Look at you better come up in God. You're going to start a fight up in here. Amen. Some of this stuff, folks, word a day costs more than your rent. And you're going to sit up here and put it on folks' clothes. You better get in God and get over it. Amen. And if you got man and man in that church that full of lust and that's what they look, look here. It don't make no difference if somebody got no hot dress on. They looking at you with yours hanging to the floor and still full of lust. Amen. Look, God come to save that which is lost. And that's what, amen, upon this rock home, this church, that door, because Jesus is the door. Amen. God over at the house of prayer holding. Look, whatever it is, let it come. Because Jesus said in the word, come unto me. Oh, ye that's weary and heavy laden. It makes no difference what your hangups are. Come on in. It makes no difference how you made up. Come on in. Because at the end of the day, he come to save your soul. He come to heal your broken heart. He come to set up liberty, your bruises, your hurts that you've experienced over and over again. He is your remedy. And God just got one for such a time as this that's going to let you know that he has accomplished his mission. It's not the preacher. It's not the 24 elders. It's not the angels that did it. God did it. He came himself in Jesus Christ. Jesus intentionally left out the day of vengeance. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't come in to do no harm to nobody. Mm -hmm. He came to destroy the works of the devil. Mm -hmm. Jesus was manifested to put a whooping on Satan right down here. In the Godhead, in heaven realm, he defeated the devil and all his angels. He said, what I'm going to do, 
I'm going to come right down there. I see a wall. He come with wrath. He come with great wrath to do my creation in. But I come that they might have life. I come because I'm a God of victory. I'm going to look beyond that fault. He's going to fill them with the, his waves. And he's going to make it make them think that it's them. But I'm going to come in and give light. And make them to know the life you once used to live because I accomplished my mission. It was not you. It was the disobedience that was that was in you. The enemy orchestrated your life. And he put all this stuff together. Mm -hmm. But I come that you might have life. I come that you might have new beginnings. I come that you might be a new creature. Mm -hmm. That you can be born again. Don't worry about the old. Don't, don't mind the old. Don't look back. Look forward. Yes. And become all I come into your life for you to be. So when Jesus was on his mission to accomplish everything. Because it was spoken with great confidence. You're talking about some boldness. Isaiah 61 is, is, is much boldness. The enemy still has a hold on me. I mean, the warfare has not been accomplished yet. He's still in power. He's still reigning and ruling over me. Oh, they had the law. But the law did not come to deliver men from his sin. Some of these religions, they get so caught up on the law, the law, the law. Did you not know even when you call yourself, he said do this on this day. He said do that on that day. He, I mean, if you do this, offer this sacrifice. That don't mean you're keeping it. Because if you was keeping it, you wouldn't have to do a sacrifice. And you wouldn't have to offer sin continually. Or, 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 offer, stuff, offer that blood of this or offer that right there. God was trying to let men really know there's another power that's reigning over you. He gave the law that you might know what sin was. Paul said it, it was a schoolmaster. So the mission that God was on, the enlightened man that was controlling you, you can't see. But I know who got you doing what you're doing. I know who's pushing you from pillar to post. I know who got you where you can't put porn down, where you can't put the drug down, where you can't come out of homosexuality and lesbian and all the evil things that the enemy has done. No put down to nobody. Amen. Because man, God loves you. Amen. He comes to free you. Even whoever it may be, boy, woman, girl. I mean, at the end of the day, he paid the price for you to get through the door because he is your way out of all of your bondages and all of your pains and all of your hurts are the thing that have ailed you. You can come to Jesus and escape the corruption that's in this world through lust. But it got to be preached unto you. That door got to be ministered to you in abundantly. It got to be shared with you that you might realize uh, that he's giving you all things that pertain to life and godliness because all power is in his hand. Uh, the mission is accomplished. Uh, and it's time for us as preachers to take on some courage uh, and get to know God and preach this thing with some boldness uh, and look folks in the face and let them know you can because God said you can. You let them know you can because Jesus paid the price. He told us we can do all things through Christ. That gives us strength and all mean all. If that means living holy, you can do it. If that means living perfect, doing the things that God has called you to do, you can do it. If that means walking in peace, you can do it. But you got to learn. You got to grow. You got to obey. You got to stick with God and learn that he is your everything. And as you begin to develop your personal relationship, you realize it's not me, but it's him. He's the one that worked the wheel and the due town of his good pleasure in me. I'm not doing this thing out of a, 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 a grievous because his commandments are not. I realize, Lord, you've given me strength I never had before. I don't have the mind I used to have. You come to find out that operation was real. When you got saved, he gave you a new mind, a new heart, and put within you a new spirit and your soul got saved. Though it was red 
crimson and scarlet. He washed you in the blood of the Lamb. And you didn't come out red. You came out white. I mean, can't nobody do it but Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. He can save you. He can heal you because he accomplished his mission. Yes. Yes. I wanted to bring that out. 4 and 18. He intentionally leaves out the day of vengeance of our God. Mm -hmm. But in Isaiah, he talked about the day of vengeance. Because it's going to come a time when God get his people and he get his people together and he get them out because you know, that, that is a day of vengeance that's going to come. But when, when he came in the person of Jesus, that wasn't the time. Right, right. Because he come to save that which is lost. He knew the right. condition and state of man. He wasn't expecting man to be holy. Even though man esteemed himself to be so, even though you have religious fanatics and people that was thinking they were better than other people and they had these high positions, amen, you don't believe it, go ask Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a chief teacher, ruler in the synagogue, seeking to teach people about God, but didn't even know Jesus. What is it that you're talking about? He didn't understand being born again. No, he did not. And so if he teaching that, what he was teaching, how can you edify or bring into perfection those people that God has called and you don't know him? You cannot do it. It turns into a mess. So, Sister Tony, for me, we can get ready to be done with this tonight. Now, I want you to go for me over there and Luke the ninth chapter and read for me Luke the ninth chapter, verse 30 and 31. Then we'll come out and finish in John 19 and then we'll be done. Luke 9, verse 30 and 31. Amen. Because as I look at this, I don't know about y'all, but it's for us to realize something. Jesus had his mission, it's for us to know his mission. What he accomplished and why he did it and what it was all about. That we might come in to know what our mission, our calling, yes. what our mission statement to be. Don't be 10, 20, 30 years and Lord, what is my purpose? And Lord, you know, I've been around folks and my God has been saved longer than I've been alive. Okay. And they still try to find out what their purpose is. Right. And they done said in all the holiness churches. And they still seeking God and hitting their knees. What is my purpose? When he done descriptive and it's written all in this Bible. I mean the purpose of what he called you is to show forth his praise. For you to be a light. For you to, oh my God. To be the sons of God and all this. There's so much description in here. What you're supposed to be going for and seeking to be. And the Lord gave me something tonight. As we get ready to let down up in here. Amen. Because when Jesus was in that place so on Luke the fourth chapter and he was saying what he was saying that if you keep reading there was a bunch of people up in there if you don't realize something the leaders was blind and the blind was leading the blind and I mean my God before Jesus got into the New Testament he said my leaders caused my people to err amen my God blind leading the blind and they all fall in the ditch because the enemy is behind this I gotta get the one that's head that I and get those that's falling in like ducks. But what I love about God, if this thing comes right and we develop a personal relationship in this New Testament, Pastor Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. I mean, y'all just got to stick with me. If I get the going wrong, up, get you out of there. Amen. Because at the end of the day, if you develop a personal relationship, then you're going to realize we all need one another. Amen. Look, you get the saints need the preacher, the preacher need the saints. Amen. That we can stay inspired at the end of the day, we all need God. And so one will help us one to the other. Amen. Gives us the motivation. Many times Paul was in prison just to hear just a few people holding on. He didn't, it, it wasn't about the whole. Amen. Just a few holding on. Checking on and gave them strength to, to go through all this affliction and all this suffering. And I mean to tell you, it's time to grow up and get tough. Take some tough skin with you because many are the afflictions of the righteous. But out of them all, the Lord is going to deliver you. Amen. My God, you're going to go through many things with those in your congregation, preacher. You're going to go through those with those that's around you. But you got to be strong and know who you're doing, what you're doing unto. Amen. At the end of the day, fully follow and obey God. Because that same God, if he's called you, amen, he know how to move mountains for you. He know how to come against that that 
come against you because at the end of the day when he accomplished this thing, when he accomplished his mission, he had us all protected. That same prophet, amen, he spoke through and said, touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. See, God is a type of God if we just do what he asked him, uh, uh, us to do, he'll do what he promised to do. And that's why it's time to build folks not upon your organization, not upon yourself, but it's time to build folks upon the rock of their salvation. Build them upon Jesus, because at the end of the day, he's the only one that can keep you from falling. He's the only one that can give you more anointing. He's the only one that can add to your spiritual growth, and that's why we're going to preach, and we're going to teach, and we're going to keep talking about it. We're going to lean on the horn of salvation. Honk, honk, honk. We're going to blow the trumpet in Zion real loud. That Jesus accomplished his mission. That you might accomplish your mission. Because he win, you win. Because great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You get I can't out of your vocabulary. Don't let nobody tell you I can't. I grew up in a house. My mama and daddy wouldn't even let us say I can't. They didn't like that word I can't. Even when we was kids, when we were corrected way early, don't you say you can't. You can. You can learn like the next man learned. You can do like the next man do. Now, when we get in God, yes, you can. You can do all things through Christ. That gives you strength. And you should want to be around strength. Don't flock to weakness. Not if you want your soul saved. Not if you want to be all that God had called you to be. He didn't just call you out of Egypt. He called you into the promised land. He called you to get in Christ. He told, He called you to suit up and take on his character and conduct. It's time to recognize he accomplished his mission and you're not done. It's for you to accomplish your mission. So when we look at this, Sister Tony, when we look over there, I want you to get for me. Luke the 19th chapter. Amen. Uh, no, no. Luke 9. And 30 and 31, what did that say? Because this is over that I should have in the chapter. Where the brothers were asleep. And Jesus was praying. And his countenance changed. Mm -hmm. And the brethren, the disciples were asleep. And the Lord showed me, son, just as they were asleep. This is what's happening mm -hmm. to a lot of my body. Mm -hmm. The church is asleep. But it's high time. See, when you get when you when you fall asleep, you haven't been around folks wake up sleep talking. They don't even make too much sense, do they? But my God, I, I seen when I was in college, I seen a person that can sleep walk, and I thought it was unreal. I thought they was playing. I mean, literally, literally sleep while they were walking, and can walk in rooms and out of rooms. I I, I thought it was funny. I mean. You got folks that sleep, walk, sleep, talk. And the Lord gave me and said, look at here. They have not my spirit, not my ways. They sleep blind. They know not what they do. That's dangerous to be in that case. It's dangerous to be there because, look, we are to be alert. He called us out of sleep. He called us out of that darkness. He calls us and we, look, he quickened me and you. When he saved you, he quickens you. He gives you, he wakes you up. Amen. Where you realize, oh no. Amen. You realize, nah, uh uh, devil, I don't belong to you. Nah, uh, I ain't thinking like that. No, I don't do that no more. No, uh uh, I ain't taking on that attitude. No, sister, brother, you talking wrong. Uh uh, that ain't what we do over here. That ain't Christ spirit. I mean, when you awake, you see Christ spirit and you recognize the devil and you don't follow that that's not as Christ. Amen. And so it's time. Amen. Look here, as you wake up, sit right there that your sight can run on in because we don't want to be the example like these brothers. The disciples was learners and was written for our learning. When they woke up, they bought did something very foolish. Mm -hmm. But God loved them and helped them. Thank Ain't that something? So read for me, Sister Tony, them two verses. Just them two verses. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, uh -huh. who appeared in glory and spake of his decease which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. So these two spoke with who? Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. And when they were speaking with Jesus, amen, these two, these, when, when, when they were speaking with Jesus, we find out 
What did that scripture just say? That's the 28? Oh, we did 30 and 31. All right, 30. Okay, I'm sorry. 30 and 31. When, read that again. Who appeared in glory, I'm sorry, and behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, uh -huh. who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Yes. So they spake of his decease, his dying. Mm -hmm. His mission, the mission statement, to do all of what was written in Isaiah. And he came to confirm, amen, the mission was to go all the way and die for our sins. Mm -hmm. And what ended up happening is Jesus was there at the Mount Transfiguration. And when they saw, when they, when they woke up, amen, that when they was asleep, Amen. When heaven was asleep, when they woke up, they saw his glory. And they began to see some things and not talk right. And they didn't understand what they were seeing. And that's what's happening. A lot of times people won't back up. Many preachers have preached because they wasn't at that level. When God takes you to a level, you see what you didn't see. And that's why I'm telling folks, don't be worried about it. Don't get, don't get all sensitive. Don't feel uh, uh, no hatred towards them. If somebody got something you don't got, just take it. Amen. That you can go on because at the end of the day, it's God because we don't help us one to the other. When you come higher, you don't see like the way you once used to see. And so the privilege, they was privileged to be there at the transfiguration and they saw the two brothers talking to Jesus and they let them know you're going to accomplish it. You're going all the way through this thing. They were encouraged and he was getting in strength from above. You're going to do this thing. Elijah and Moses, they were sitting up there letting them know talking with him and they woke up and they seen this taking place and out of their mouth because of where they at the level they was, they let you know there's levels to this thing. Even though they became apostles at this time, they wasn't. They were learners. They were disciples. And when they woke up, they were sitting up and saying, it was good for us to be here. Let's make three tabernacles. One for you and one for Moses. I did one for you, Jesus. Amen. I mean, my God, look at the glory. Can you see? Look at, look at his countenance. And they just looking all, and my, they didn't understand what this thing was all about. Amen. They was just like any other. They was always hearing of the scriptures that knew of the canons. And they were sitting up there esteeming the prophets. And my God, they sought to put the prophets on the same level that Jesus was. But no, we can't do that because Jesus was God in the flesh. And what God did because he loved his church. He loved the followers. He loved the believers. He loved the disciples. Amen. And he sat there and talked to them because they let the glory cloud come down. That same glory cloud that was with Moses and back in the day. He come the glory cloud because look, y'all don't know what y'all see, neither do you understand. But what you can't do, I'm not going to send you to be preaching Moses and Elijah not like the way you're doing right here you gotta put them beneath Jesus you gotta realize now, oh, this is my beloved son you don't go get three I mean it's all about one and that one was Jesus because that's what Moses was all about Moses was not all about himself he just fully obeyed God that's why he got in Elijah wasn't all about himself he went to caves and waited on God for the next mission whatever but God gave him the new, that's what he did and then he went back, but he wasn't proclaiming to be some great wonder and we in the hour and time too many people are doing like the Simons of the world and people don't realize, they're calling people preachers and don't realize you're talking to a wizard don't really realize you're sitting in front of a witch, because I've come to this to know this, amen, if God is not using a man or woman it is another spirit amen, my God because when you look at Simon then when Philip went down there and he preached Christ he didn't preach himself, he didn't preach the apostles he didn't preach Moses he didn't preach Elijah, he didn't preach none of them prophets, he preached Jesus and when he went down there preaching, here goes Simon that gave him out himself to be some great wonder and them folks were sitting up under him and they thought Simon was the great wonder of God but then when that gospel came because the anointing is upon Jesus and Philip preached Jesus and he was anointed to preach Jesus and demons and devils came out of many people that were sitting right there that thought they knew God and after Philip got through preaching Saul saw something I mean uh, Simon saw something happening 
The Bible said he used sorcery. He bewitched him. And I said, wait a minute, come back here. If the people thought he was a great wonder of God, I mean, that means he was sitting up here talking things that sound like God. But he didn't have no power. He didn't understand what he was saying. He was just mimicking and just saying what other prophets had said. But he had no enlightenment, neither incitement. So therefore, people was bound. They were bound to evil spirits, bad habits. I mean, bad dispositions. Look at here. Don't you think, amen, you can't have them. If there was ten virgins and five was foolish and five were wise, all of them was virgins, but all of them didn't have his spirit. All of them didn't have no all. And when you don't have all, you'll get something on you that need to come out of you. And what ended up happening, the Lord showed me, son, just like the man. It went, see, people know the Cleos of the world. We know the people that sit there and play with cards. And, but we can't see the one. That'll put the Bible right there. Quote a scripture. Run a conference. Sit in the pulpit. And using sorcery. See, sorcery is anything to make you see anything else but God. Amen. The devil don't mind you sitting up there steaming man and sitting up and making the preacher bigger than God. He wants you to do that. He got to get you back in the club, back on the strip table, back up in there dancing like that. He, he just wants you to sting that man in such a way where you don't see Jesus. It'll be all on him. And when you get to doing that, he can take you out of here like that. At the end of the day, I wouldn't want to be nobody. Amen. That be used of the devil like that because the hell quick fast and hurry you on your way. But God come, amen, that you might be saved. This is the time and hour I'm looking at uh, because many have fell asleep in there. You can be falling asleep and maybe you had the gift to prophesy. Maybe you had the gift to teach. Maybe you had the gift to preach uh, and you don't even realize you sleep because you have not a spirit uh, and your attitude is not right. Uh, and instead of you leaning on God to give you information, you track it down like a hound dog. Uh, amen. You sit your, put your ears and your eyes everywhere. Where. I mean, my God, folks, has gone as far as in this day and time and hour. I mean, they want to try to get in on folks' phone calls because God don't give them nothing. Brother, that ain't nothing but a witch. That ain't nothing but a witch. So they can come acting like God is talking to them. And you don't know that they just got the information from brother so-and-so. That's what they used to do in them funny meetings. Have them things on their ears, getting things from the congregation and making folks think God is giving them something. But I got to serve this known as tonight. God had accomplished his mission in Jesus Christ. And he's on the throne sitting on the right hand. And he sees and he do hear. He see all the hypocrisy. He see the evilness. My God. And in the midst of it all, he gonna have him a glorious church. Because there gonna be some people that wake up and get delivered from the sorceries. Get delivered from the Simons and all these witches. All these folks that's blind leaders. They're going to find and seek out light. And when they find that light, they're going to walk therein. And they're going to know and hear his voice. Because Jesus' mission was to heal the brokenhearted. He came to bind up the brokenhearted and proclaim liberty. He come to open up the eyes of them. If you got to open up the eyes and heal the brokenhearted. And give sight recovery, recovery, recovery of sight. Even to the blind. Amen. That's going to be those that's going to get wore out and get tired of following blindness and they're going to want their sight and I'm reminded of blind Bartimaeus he said Jesus have mercy upon me thou son of David have mercy I want to see and this the time and hour that people are going to get their sight because there are many blind leaders see we in the day and hour that churches have turned into this people know the church by the church pretty much taking a stand against stuff. Right. I want y'all to know something. All right. But what the Lord is wanting people to come to know the church concerning is to show love mm -hmm. that they'll come to know him so they will learn how to live mm -hmm. like the way you live. Where we can be living epistles. That's why you got to learn how to have forbearance. Mm -hmm. That's why we got to grow in the fruits of the spirit. That's why we got to learn how to get away from judging those that don't know God. That's in the world that haven't tasted of his goodness. 
I'm not talking about these slow bellies and all these folks that's been planted among us. Amen. I mean, my God, while, the, while, while man slept, he sold tares for seasons. We in the season that the tares have rails up, but there's some wheat that God, the shepherd, the good shepherd, is still looking after. And he's watching and he's seeing. And God know how to separate that others may be benefiting. He don't want men and women standing in the way of sinners. He told us don't sit in that seat. Get saved. You're supposed to be a door that they can come in because he's the door. You got Christ. Come on to him and let him do it for you. That's how we are. We don't sit there and say, oh, uh -uh. Jesus can help you. Jesus can save you. We don't seek to do no harm because we're peacemakers. Amen. When I looked at this and the Lord was giving me this, y'all, concerning, and I saw how Jesus intentionally left out that vengeance because his mission was to save that which is lost. He didn't come to judge nobody. He could have came in this thing condemning everything to him. He could have came, but he went up in them places trying to help and say, y'all mouth like open some pockets. I'm in here all day long reaching out to y'all. All y'all want to do is evil to me because people are not following you. They following me. And I'm convinced that's what the devil don't want in man that he used for folks to follow God. They want people to follow them. You're right. You're right. But my God, it's time to wake up and know who you follow. Because if you follow Christ, we end up in heaven. You end up not following him. You end up on the wrong side and end up in hell. Lifting up your eyes. And that's not the place that God created for man. Heaven was made for man. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. Good. Be clear. Thank you. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. So we're coming aside. So Jesus referred many times to the religious leaders. Y'all know I'm talking right of his day as blind. And they were blind to the purposes of God. And he criticized them many times for not lifting their hand to help people. They didn't want to heal. They got upset because people got healed on certain days. They got so upset when they want to throw them over the brow. Don't you loose, don't you, when you, when you water and feed you. These men was not about God's purpose. Not at all. Even though it was written before he came. The establishments was about them. Yes. That's why people love the high seat. Mm -hmm. They love the praises of who? Me. Men. More than God. Yeah. And he may sit one spirit and tear a congregation up. And God will sit his spirit and raise one up. Yes. And so this is what it's all about. Jesus accomplished the mission that we might be saved. He accomplished the mission that we might be saved. So a mission is just a statement that's just a way to put your purpose or the calling in words. And that's what we preach. We preach the calling, the purpose where with God came into this world in the person of Jesus Christ to build you, make you, establish you, grow you, and fix you for his glory that you and I might be saved. Stand on your feet tonight. Let's give God a great big hand praise tonight. Jesus accomplished his mission part two. Amen is what it's all about. Amen. And if he accomplished his mission, listen here. You have a journey. You have a task that he puts you to. He's going to accomplish it and help you accomplish yours in him. Is that all right? So we thank God for you that are tuned in by the way of internet. As always, I pray you go with God. He will go with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we 